It's a really good thing I just turned 21 and have the opportunity to partake in a few beverages if I choose to because if I'm going to survive the rest of this brave season, it looks like I'm going to need a few, especially after last night's unfortunate turn of events. Um, as all-star first baseman Freddie Freeman was hit in the wrist with a 95 mile an hour fastball which resulted in a broken wrist and he will be out 10 weeks and boy does it look like it's going to be a long 10 weeks you would think after that type of game last night with tempers flaring and all that we would come out and try to prove have something big to prove and we we and Specifically, Julio Tehran laid a big fat egg, allowing a career worst nine earned runs in three innings pitched, including three homers and one to Blue Jay starter Marcus Stroman, the first Blue Jays pitcher since 2003 to hit a homer. It's not. It's not the stat you want to be a part of and Julio Tehran SunTrust Park has not been friendly to him at all with a 1050 home ERA versus an 071 ERA on the road it's clear he needs to get the ball down and has not done that in any way shape or form in his first five home starts in the new ballpark now, um, I really don't like Canada right now because they hit seven of our guys, showboated, losing eight to three, using gay slurs, just, just unprofessional stuff, and it doesn't need to be anywhere in the game. I know the seven hit by pitches were not on purpose, and this, that, and the other, but as bad. As baseball players, you don't want to get thrown at. I know some pitches get away, and that's what happened in the Freddie Freeman situation. And now we just get to deal with the um, aftermath of that this unfortunate series. And it's unfortunate, too, because the team was, although streaky this season, was finally... Trending upward, winning five out of six, looking decent, figuring out the starting pitching inconsistencies aside from Tehran at home. And even the bullpen was stabilizing a little more. But now we lost a potential MVP candidate and the catalyst to our lineup. He was tearing the cover off the ball, and it didn't look like things were going to stop. And unfortunately, the baseball gods were not smiling on us last night. And it feels like our shot at a decent season has gone up in flames. Now, we're only... About a quarter of the way through 40, 41 games, and then a lot can happen. But losing a player of that caliber is just irreplaceable, and we understand that. Um, as an organization and as fans, it's just really depressing because it was really fun to watch a booming offense, and we were starting to rise, so now it's just a going to be difficult to see how we trudge through this next 10 weeks and you know we could come out the other side better I mean we signed veteran first baseman James Loney he's been around the game a while and we've got pieces they're just not Freddie Freeman and you just it shortens a very lengthy lineup that was producing at high, high clips. And and the um, 
even more unfortunate part was that Freddie Freeman was off to one of the best starts in Atlanta Braves history as through 41 games he had 14 homers which was tied for the lead in Major League Baseball and through that same amount of games Hank Aaron only had two more than Freddie Freeman does to this point so who knows he could have hit 50 60 who knows and now and now we're not gonna know and the risk is a finicky thing and you don't know how it will respond but the good thing is it's not required surgery so he can just hopefully rest it rehab it make it and it'll heal on time and the proper way and we'll see what happens from there my concern is the rest of the team the psyche of course the psyche of the fans is not uh, great right now and it shouldn't be especially me um because i watch 162 games every year and it's been a long long rebuilding process and it looked like we were gonna turn the corner and now who knows but um my biggest concern as we move forward is that Nick Marquez, Brandon Phillips, Tyler Flowers, Matt Kemp are going to try to do too much and try to replace the production and leadership that Freddie brings to that locker room and on the field every day, and that's just not possible. So I just hope that it becomes a absence makes you stronger, adversity makes you stronger situation, and we come out the other side decent, maybe battling 500 by the all-star break, maybe, and maybe fight for the second wild card, maybe the wild card, and see what, see what happens. All I want to do, I just want to stay competitive, stay afloat, stay fun to watch, but... I, this type of loss is unimaginable, and it's just something you have to deal with in sports, and most of the time, when these losses come, that means it's not going to be good for the first couple of weeks, and oh joy, we have Washington coming in, who we can't seem to beat, even if we had a eight-run lead in the past couple of seasons, so, I don't know, it, it, it looks really bleak right now, um, who knows, baseball's a weird game, and anything can happen on any given night, and you play every night, so you have an opportunity to gain some momentum, so hopefully that happens, but losing Freddie Freeman at this juncture of the season, when we all felt we were turning upward is a devastating loss and with the inconsistencies throughout the other parts of our ball club, the bullpen and Tehran and just the starting pitchers in general, this could become a dumpster fire season really, really quick. And all I can say is hand me strawberry daiquiri so I can get through the rest of this season if it turns into what I think it might in a dumpster fire situation but the one thing I want us to realize is we cannot um, overextend our resources to try to fill the void of Freddie Freeman because I don't care who you are unless you're Bryce Harper, Mike Trout or one of the top players in baseball you ain't feel, fill in the hole of what Freddie Freeman has done for us this year. And honestly, I think he would be right smack dab in the middle of the MVP discussion f the entire season because nothing, like I said, nothing was looked like it was going to stop him. Unfortunately, a 95-mile-an-hour fastball in stopped him. And... It might stop the team's overall success. It's just going to be um, 
very interesting to see how we fight through this adversity. And I hope it's decent and respectable because we're all, they're all professionals and they want to do well because it's just been a long four, four or five years of inconsistent play and losing because we're rebuilding and we all understand that, but rebuilding is boring and it sucks to watch losing baseball. It sucks to watch losing sports. And now we get this. So we will see. I hope it works. I hope we come out better on the other side, but your guess is as good as mine. And if it's like anything like tonight, mm, we might be in trouble. That's all I, I mean, I don't know. But I do want to say, chop on. I will be watching every single game, maybe not the full game, depending on how how the scoreboard looks, but I will be watching every game, and go Braves.